discuss binary search pseudocode in this lecture. So, as you could see, there are uh, two algorithms uh, been written for the binary search. One is iterative algorithm, the second one is recursive algorithm. We can prefer any algorithm for uh, uh, binary search. So, the very first is iterative algorithm in which the iterative procedure is followed and the second algorithm is recursive algorithm in which the recursive function is followed. First, let us discuss the iterative algorithm. So, into binary search, A indicates the array and n indicates the number of elements, the size of the input and the key indicates the target value, the key element which we want to search. So, the, as a very first step, you are supposed to fix the low pointer as well as the high pointer. So, if your low pointer is 1, your high pointer would be n. If your low pointer is 0, suppose if the array starts from 1, your low pointer is going to be 1 and the high pointer is going to be n. If array starts from 0, the low would be pointing 0 and the high would be pointing n minus 1. And we are going to use the loop in which we have given the condition whether the low is lesser than or equal to high. So, if it is lesser than or equal to high, which means we are supposed to uh, like if low is lesser than high, uh, we are supposed to identify uh, the midpoint, which means there are more than one element in an array. To identify the midpoint, the formula is low plus high divided by 2. So, once the mid element is found, we are supposed to compare the mid element along with the key value key value is the target value. So, compare the key value with the mid value. If the key value is equal to the mid value, it would be returning the index of the mid. If it is not equal, as a next step, we are supposed to compare the key value along with the mid value, whether it is lesser or greater. If the key value is lesser than the mid value, we are supposed to focus on only the left sub problem. So, we are supposed to change the high pointer as mid minus 1. If the key value is greater than the mid point, we are supposed to change only the low pointer to mid plus 1. So, this is how the iterative process works. If the element is not found, it is going to return 0. So, basically, we are just going to follow the three step. The very first step is identifying the midpoint. After identifying the midpoint, every time we have to check whether the midpoint is equal to the key. If midpoint is equal, the element is found, it would return the midpoint. If the midpoint is not, if the midpoint is not equal to the key, we have to perform uh, one more step, which is the comparison, whether it is greater or lesser, we are supposed to check. If it is lesser, change only the high pointer. If it is greater, change only the low pointer and again you just follow the same since it is a loop. Again you just check whether low is lesser than high. If it is lesser again identify the midpoint low plus high divided by 2 and then again compare key and mid return mid if it is equal. If it is not equal check whether it is lesser or greater. If it is lesser change the high pointer. If it is greater change the low pointer. So, until the element is found the loop will keep on working like this and once the element is found it would come out of the loop. Suppose till the last iteration if the element is not found it would return 0 which means the element is not found the search is unsuccessful. So, this is how the iterative procedure works, the iterative algorithm works. Now, let us discuss the recursive algorithm. So, in the recursive algorithm, yes, there is a low, you all know low would be pointing the very first position, high would be pointing the last position and key is the target value. Now, you are, you are going to check whether the low is equal to equal to high. When the low would be equal to high means when there is only one element in an array. For instance, we will take this example. So, this is my example in an array there is only one element. If so, both my low and high would be pointing only one element, right? So, uh, because there is only one element in array. If there is only one element, you no need to follow the dividend conquest strategy here. Directly, you can compare array of low or either array of high or equal to high. If both are equal, it would return the low or high pointer. If it is not equal, it returns 0, which means the search is unsuccessful. If there is only one element, or these uh, these are the statements which, which can be followed. If the element has more than one element, if there are more than one element, we can apply dividend conquest strategy. We can start identifying the midpoint here, right? So, the, as a very first step, you identify the midpoint. To calculate the compute the midpoint, this is the formula low plus high divided by 2. So, once the midpoint is identified, we are supposed to compare the key value along with the mid value. If key value is equal to mid, we can return the mid value. It would return the mid index, which means the search is successful. It would return the index position of the mid. If it is not equal, again, we are supposed to compare whether the mid is uh, equal to key. If it is not, uh, sorry, if it is lesser or greater than key. If the key is lesser, as usual, we are supposed to change the high pointer mid minus 1 and make a re this is a recursive function it is going to make a recursive call now. So, if since it is lesser I am going to change only the high pointer as mid minus 1. I am going to call this uh, 
function again the same procedure I am going to apply again uh, it uh, called the binary search function again in the place of loo as usual the loo pointer uh, the, the index would be passed and since it is lesser I am going to concentrate only on the left sub problem which means I am going to change only the high pointer. So, in the place of high I am have changed I, since it was not equal I just changed the high pointer right to mid, mi mid minus 1. So, this mid minus 1 index would be passed here when you call when you make a recursive call in the place of high the mid minus 1 would be passed and the key value. So, again it is going to check in the sub problem there is only one element if there is only one element these procedures are applied if more than one element again we are supposed to calculate the midpoint after calculating midpoint compare it with the midpoint if it is not equal check whether it is lesser or greater if it is lesser the high pointer would be changed and in the place of i the mid minus 1 would be passed when you make recursive call again suppose if it is greater it would call this function so this function would be called in the place of if it is greater we are going to concentrate on the right sub problem so if you concentrate on the right sub problem you are supposed to change the low pointer as mid plus 1 so in the place of low i'm going to pass mid plus 1 so when you call the function here in the place of low mid plus 1 would be passed and high would remain as it is and the key value would be passed so this is how the recursive procedure works so in the iterative approach in the iterative algorithm the function repeatedly divides the search interval in half until the target is found or the interval is empty it updates the left and right pointers based on whether the target is lesser or greater than the value at the midpoint whereas in the recursive approach the function recursively calls itself with updated left and right pointers until the target is found or the interval is empty so it terminates when the left pointer exceeds the right pointer indicating that the target is not present in the array which means the tar the, the search is unsuccessful now let's discuss the time complexity So, the worst case time complexity for binary search is big O of log n, the best case is omega of 1 and the average case is theta of log n. Let us discuss how. So, in linear search we just trace the algorithm line by line. Uh, because we followed only the iterative procedure so here we have we are going to we have used the recursive procedure over here even for iterative both for both iterative and recursive the complexity is going to be log n why because every time if you check if you look at the example here so every time we are ignoring one complete complete list one complete sub problem and we focus on only one sub problem for example here uh, when the target value was 2 during the first iteration we found the midpoint 14 and our target value was 2 so, since it both are not equal we just divided the list into 2 equal half 2 equal half we just divided it into and we made the comparison whether it is lesser or greater so if it was lesser we, we, we just since it was lesser we focused on only the left sub problem we ignored the right sub problem completely here that was uh, after the first iteration when we focus during the second iteration we ignored one complete list and we focused on one list only again the list the search was unsuccessful so during the third iteration we since we focused on only this list during the third iteration this was our mid element again the list was getting divided into two this was one sub problem and this was another sub problem right so after making a comparison again uh, again it was lesser since it was le since it was lesser we focused on only the left sub problem and again we ignored the right sub problem over here so every time the list is getting subdivided into two and we are ignoring one sub problem completely and we focus on only one sub problem so the complexity here is going to be big o of log n so and we cannot perform the operation count here on the recursive algorithm why because when there are recursive function involved we cannot perform the operation count we cannot perf we cannot trace a pseudocode line by line so where the recursive function is involved if the recursive function is uh, procedure is followed in the pseudocode we will not be able to trace the pseudocode line by line so we can compute will be able to derive the complexity only through the recurrence relation so as a very first step for the recursive algorithm we are supposed to frame the recurrence relation so the recurrence relation for binary search concept is for the binary search algorithm is t of n by 2 t of n equals to t of n by 2 plus 1 so this t of n is as uh, so this n is the size of the problem
and the coefficient here is 1 here which is uh, there is no coefficient which means there is 1. So, this indicates the number of sub problem how many number of sub problem we are going to we are solving each time. So, here it is 1 why there is 1 means every time like the list is getting divided into 2, 2 sub problems we are getting in each iteration but we are focusing on we are solving only one iteration, one iteration we are completely ignoring it. So, the coefficient is only 1 here and this n by 2 indicates the size of the sub problem. So, every time the size of the sub problem is n by 2, if the problem size is n in the next step we are just getting n by 2 as a, each sub problem size is going to be n by 2. So, this is going to be so it is n by 2 the size of the sub problem every time here in the binary search is n by 2 and this 1 is going to be the cost, the cost of work done for non-recursive calls. So, here other than identifying the midpoint and dividing the problem into uh, two different sub problems, we are performing another major operation which is making a comparison, we are performing the comparison operation whether it is equal or less, if it is equal yes the search is successful, if it is lesser or greater we are supposed to change the low pointer as well as the high pointer right. So, another major operation which we are performing outside the recursive function call is performing the comparison operation. So, the cost for performing the comparison operation is 1, so here it is mentioned 1. So, this is the recurrence relation for binary search algorithm. Now, to solve only if we solve this recurrence relation would be able to get the time complexity. So, to solve the recurrence relation there are different methods are actually there like recurrence tree method, master's theorem method are there, but master's theorem method or the easiest is the easiest one. So, if you apply the master's theorem on this recurrence relation you would get the time complexity as log n. So, the time complexity the worst case time complexity as well as the average case time complexity for binary search algorithm is log n and the best case time comp complexity is 1. So, now let us see the worst case scenario as well as the best case scenario how this is log n and how this is 1 right. So, here the worst case scenario for binary search is if the element is found at first or last position. in an array, it is going to be the worst case scenario because if you uh, look at it closely you know uh, when log when exactly the algorithm would take log a number of iterations to find the element to find the key value. When the element is found at first position or last position for example, if your target value is 2 only during the last iteration you would be able to identify this too, the key element would be identified according to the binary search concept and also if your target value is 29, again only during the last iteration you would be able to identify this 29. So, the worst case scenario here is if the element is found at the very first position or the last position, it would take maximum number of iteration which is log n. So, here the target value was 2, I think we computed it with the 2, so this was the uh, yeah, the only during the last iteration after this there is no more iteration. So, the worst case scenario is going to be the element is found at first or last. When we would get one the best case scenario like which means it is going to take only one number of iteration. So, when exactly it is going to take only one number of iteration let us see this example. The very first example our target value was 14. So, here how many number of iterations it took only one iteration why? Why? Because if your target value is the if your target value is the mid value, it is going to be what only one iteration it is going to take. So, the best case scenario is when the key value is found at the uh, mid position of an array, it is going to be 1 why because it is going to consume only one iteration to identify it. So, this is the worst case and these are the scenarios for the worst case and best case is explained and the complexity is log n. When you compare the complexity of binary search with the linear search, for linear search the complexity is n and for binary search it is going to be log n. So, when you compare it is clearly it shows that like the binary search is the efficient one why because the binary search algorithm takes only lesser number of iterations which is log n. Thank you.